Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the rear brakes on a drum brake vehicle. <laughs> so anyway, it could be front brakes if it's an old sucker in the early 70s or before. First thing you want to do is you want to look at this thing and see which is which. This is an emergency brake kick thing. You want to see where that is. Is it on the right or is it on the left? You also want to look at your screw on the bottom. Which side is the screw on? This one's on the right hand side. And then you also want to see the order that all these springs come off. And you see that your uh, return springs is what these are. This one goes on first, it's on the left. And then the spring for the spacer, it's also on the left. And the bend of the spacer is out. So, anyway, with those in mind, I'm going to go ahead and start doing a little bit of tear down. I like to leave the hold down springs on and pull these off first because that way things don't all fall apart. As I take them off, I'll take them off and I'll lay them out on an imaginary set of brakes on the ground. Also use brake parts cleaner to get all the cancer shit off of it into the pan. Excuse my French. All the asbestos or whatever. I like to use the green because it's not as hard on your immune system. It's like evil for evil. You know, you trade the dust in the air for the evil of this stuff on your lungs. Either one, you're screwed. So be sure to charge enough when you do this. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So anyway, uh, first thing I'll do is I'll get either a pair of vice grips or a pair of channel locks, and I'll pull this spring off. And when I do that, I lean back with my shoulder so that my arm's straight. With my arm straight, I have the most squeezing power to hold on to that son of a gun. So I'll take that off, and I'll set it aside. And like I say, I'm going to make my imaginary brake backing plate right there. So I put that in place. And the next thing I do is I look to see where this mounts in so that I can remember that in the order that it came off. Same thing, I'll get my arm straight. In this case, I'm going to use my knee. My arm is straightened, and I'm just leaning with my leg. And as I do that... Think some good grunting thoughts. And set that aside. It goes on here. Now remember when I put this together, I want that to go on there first. Now the way that this is having tension is because of this spring right here. You can either pull this spring off of the top there, or you can pull this off here. I'm gonna opt to pull a spring off of the thing here to relieve the tension. Just remember how that goes. As you take it off, do one side at a time. So if you get in trouble, you can go to the other side and look at how it's put together and go off of that. That may save your butt. So, set those aside. I set the plate there. See how that's starting to look like how they were when they were on the car? Now you've got a bottom return spring. I leave those on till last. I usually thread them on there because they're underneath and they're just a pain to get to. Let me try this one. Sometimes I'll try it just if I'm feeling like a challenge. There we go. Now on these screws it's important which sides right and left because one will be reverse threaded and the other one will be regular threaded. You want to collapse those down when you put on the new brake pads or shoes. If it's drum brakes like this, like a half moon, it's a shoe. If it's disc brakes, then it's a pad. So anyway, I just lay that into place. You see this spring has to go this way so that, you see how it's got a little hook that goes around? That's to clear this little screw. That screw corresponds with this little foot here. Let's see if I can show it. See that little foot surface? And when, every time you break up, when you break up, yeah, when you lose a relationship, this, no, I got that on the brain. So anyway, every time you reverse and hit the brakes, it'll make a little notch on that and it'll turn this, it'll actually expand it. So according to which way that screws, that's where that foot goes. So anyway, moving on, I can see that I've got a little bit of a hardware thing stuck back up in here that plugs into here. I'll want to remember how that goes. And it's important that I put the spring on it on this side first and then the spring on it on the outside because otherwise it'll just pull through and rotate around. Okay, moving on. The only thing holding this in place now is those hold down springs. So I pull this out 
I pay attention to which way that little hook on the top went. I set that in the middle. Now the way I like to do these, you got to hold from the back side because otherwise these pins, they just go through, straight through. So if you don't put your finger on the back side to support it, then you're not going to be able to get it off. What I do is I take needle nose pliers and I put my thumb in the middle of them. I don't hold the handles, I just hold my thumb and I twist it. Now see I'm not even holding the back side. I should be and then I wouldn't be fighting it. If I had two hands, I'd have one on the back side, I promise you that. So anyway, you get the idea. Now this spring here, it was holding in the side, and because I was astute and looked beforehand, I'll be able to duplicate that. And this twisted around, if I was using two hands, I wouldn't have that problem. But there's a little horseshoe clip thing, I want to clip that together on the new pad. The other thing you want to pay attention to on these drum brakes is on the lead brake. See how we run out of pad material and then we're going, 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 stop. Now on this one, we got pad material all the way up to the end. On your back shoe, the one toward the back of the car, you're going to have a full shoe all the way. And this one, it's going to cut short and you want it to be that way. So when you line up your brakes and when you clip this thing in, make sure you clip it in behind one that's going to be, you know, with material all the way back. And on the other side, it's going to be a mirror image to this. You'll have the emergency brake thing to the back and so on. So anyway, that's how you do drum brakes. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to be replacing the wheel cylinder. When you do your brakes, check your seals around here. If they look wet and gooey, then you want to replace the wheel cylinder. To do that, you've just got a couple of bolts on the back side and a line. Break the line free first, crack the rust and undo the hydraulic line and then undo the bolts and pull them out the rest of the way. And then assembly is just the reverse of the way you put it together, but you'll want to use, uh, I like to use these 90 degree angle pliers on the springs because they kind of hook into it. And that way, you know, I'll grab the spring and I'll just pull, you know, by the strength of that. So anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. That's just a little crash course on the basics of drum brakes. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to favorite, subscribe, thumbs up, do all that kind of stuff. It'll help promote the video. And uh, happy St. Patrick's Day.